So our topic is environmental engineering, and you know that the Bible in Genesis outlines for us what it means to be um, environmental engineers. And that whole idea is built on the notion that you guys are building something right now. When you sat down at the table with the people you're with, I don't know if you know them or not, um, but when you sat down at that table, you sensed and you were, you were assessing the environment that they brought with them. And all of us do. When I walked around to the tables, I brought an environment. And whatever that environment was, that, that's what you experience, you know? Uh, and, and it's what I've been building as an environment. And, and so we all build environments. You build it on your job, you build it in your home, you build it in your relationships, you build it in your attitude, in your, in your presuppositions, how you think about things is, has been environmentally put together <clears throat> or been, has been put together and it creates an environment. And so the reality is all of us are designed to build. That's why you build environment. You're designed to build. And, and, and um, it, it, it's um, unfortunate that we don't spend more time preparing builders to build because that's who you are. That's what you are. That's why you come to church. You don't come to church just to, to shout and dance and, and, and just enjoy the sermon. I'll never forget I was in the barbershop one time. And, and the people that didn't know me, and I, I didn't know them, I knew just the barber, and I came there to get a little clip. And, and um, the guy next to me in the chair was saying, man, I don't go to no church, man. The pastor don't get fired up if he don't, if he don't jump off the pulpit, if he don't, if, if he, if he don't, if he don't start screaming, if he, if he, if ain't no fire, man, I ain't in it. I ain't in it. I ain't, I ain't in it. You know, and, and the guy, my barber was going to say something to him. And then these, these preachers with these lapel mics, man, he, this is a lapel mic, you know, <laughs> he's preaching with these lapel mics. I ain't feeling, you got to get a mic, man. You got to be hollering at you. And he, he was just going in, you know, and, and the guy was going to say, I said, I, I hunched him. I said, don't stop, let him, let him alone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's identify with him in his need to grow. Pray for him and believe God Amen. for his pastor as well. Amen. Or whoever it is that's, that's sharing with him. But we're designed to build. We're designed to build and we build environments. And, 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 and it's because that's how God started this whole place. The whole universe was, was an environment that was shaped by God, built by God uh, for you and I to live in. And, and he designed you. In, in, the, in, in the same fashion, he made you after his likeness. He made you uh, a, a builder. He made you able to build, and he gives you resource so that you can, you can build. But we understand by our lesson that we have to be careful what we build. Now, I can't go through everything that we, we've already done, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward and move, move up. Um, but the reason why you're careful what you build because you have to live in what you build and live with what you build. You have to live with that, you know, and, 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 and what's even less fortunate than that is that other folk around you got to live in what you build. You know, your, your children, your wives, your, 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 your colleagues, your associates, your, 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 your partners in business, perhaps. They got to live in what you build. What you bring to the table is what's been built, and that's what people got to deal with as it relates to, to you. The good news is that God can help us to rebuild. You know, he helps us to rebuild. Uh, my, my son has a business called Better Home Solutions, and they redo stuff. They they do uh, all kinds of rebuilding type things, and and uh, and uh, they do a good job of that. You know, what's what's that thing? What what's those those units? Eighty. What's it called? ADUs. ADUs yeah. Uh, what's what's that stand for? Addition. What is it? Additional dwelling units. And so if you want to turn your garage into uh, oh, home, you know, they do that, do a wonderful job of, of that. And yes, I am advertising. Uh, and, and so, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not shy about that or, or, or misunderstanding what's going on. I don't want you to misunderstand either. If, if, if you want to build a ADU or you have a remodel job you want to do, then I, I'd like for you to call my son and give him a call. I wouldn't recommend him if he, if, if he wasn't up to snuff. Amen. I, I, I wouldn't do that, you know, and, and, and so he's up to snuff. His company's up to snuff. They do, do good work, and so if you're needing that, you want to take advantage of that. And so, but my, I, was, I was talking about the rebuild. God allows us this wonderful opportunity to rebuild. I'm so grateful for that, you know, because I, mean, I was, I was, I was uh, um, just a, a wreck from when I, when I, when I left my, 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 my parents' place, you know, 
I mean, you would have thought I was doing good. You'd have thought everything was, was great, but, but I was a wreck. I, mean, I was a wreck because my parents were limited in how they were able to build me. They did the best they could. My dad, I was telling somebody earlier, my dad gave me a wonderful work ethic, and I will forever be grateful for that. He gave me a wonderful work ethic. I, I had to work. He'd make me do. We had a big house, big yard, and 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 I had to cut that yard. Me and my brother, and then uh, um, Mr. Ferguson, who lived next door, had all daughters, five daughters, and he'd make us go over there and cut that. I hated every one of them girls. Thomasina, <laughs> Olga. Oh, I still remember all their names. Hated their guts. I see them in school. I hate them. I'd look at them. Just, don't don't speak to me. You know, and and uh, and and so we had to go next door because you know. Uh, but 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 I had to work. I had to work, and so I have that work ethic, and I apply it. It's, it it happens in every detail of my of my life. And and uh, if you don't have it, you can get it. You can get it. That's why you're here. I I, I want to give you some of what I what I've given. And what I was going to say is that is that I'm going to do some review because I realized as I was praying this morning, God told me, you know, you've given these people uh, principles and and concepts that you've learned over. A hundred years. I'm not that old, but over many years. And, and so some of this is, is going to be uh, we need to go over it and, and, and review it and take the time so you can get it, because it's not a one session kind of a thing. I learned this through life. I learned it through ministry many years and through working in the secular field in, 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 for many years uh, and, and then being in ministry full time for many years. I've learned these things and God's been gracious to teach me and I'm going to do everything I can to to share them with you. Uh, and so we build and what we build is environments and we build those environments right now. We're building all the time. The way you listen and attend, the way you the way that you the way that you are, 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 are listening to me right now, how you are listening is building something. Amen. The, the thoughts that you are allowing yourself to have right now is building something. You know, and, and so we've got we've got to focus in and make sure that we are where God wants us to be so we can do what God wants us to do. And so you build wherever you are. And, and you do that because you're ordained by God to do that. And you're doing it by faith. You know, it takes faith to be negative, just like it takes faith to be positive. Yeah. Amen. Some of us can have faith in negative stuff. We, we, we believe the, the lie the devil has told us. And we got faith in that. Amen. But you can also believe what God is showing you and moving in that direction. So. We all start in, in Genesis where, where there was darkness and desolation and acuity and, and, and just undistinguishable uh, horror on the earth. It was just void and dark. And we study those words. Those words are very informative in terms of what was going on there. Undistinguishable ruin. It was just absolute mess. And all of us, our lives are there. And, and, and whether we realize it or not, before we meet Christ, that's where we are. We, we're an undistinguishable ruin. We are we're headed toward we're, we're on a slide to hell, which is worse than what you ha what you're into right now or have been in, into in your life. And, and enter Jesus and Jesus brings us out of that that darkness and puts us uh, in uh, uh, to his marvelous light. And and we saw God in, 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 in the environmental shaping that he did, causing light to be the first thing that he causes to to happen. Let there be light. Let there be light. And so um, um, our environment must be one that that produces light. And, and, and this word light is an interesting, interesting word. It's a it's a word that just doesn't mean uh, the, the, the light that you're seeing from these lights that are above us. But it, 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 it is not just illumination, but it's also enlightenment. And he says it in the book, man, I, and it took me years to get this, I'm telling you. But when God showed it to me, man, it was just beautiful to see it. And I, I love talking about it. Uh, but it's not just light, physical light or the light of just the sun. But the entire universe that we live in is lit. In other words, it is enlightened. He made the apple tree with enlightenment in it. He said it this way. We, we, I'm, uh, we're going we're gonna to produce trees that, that have fruit on them and the seed is in the tree and it's able to produce after its own kind. And so the fruit that's being produced is not being produced because it's just an apple. It's being produced because God made it apples or peaches or whatever it is that is made of. But he also put enlightenment in it. And so it knows how to reproduce itself. If there was nobody around the tree, the apple would fall to the ground. The seed would get in the ground and it knows it's going to grow. That was a good time to say amen. 
Do, do you need to have some amen classes in here? When I say something that's good and I stop. Y'all look at me like. <laughs> All that sugar, yeah. That's why we kind of chilled on the grits a little bit because I, I was trying to preach through grits and eggs and biscuits and, and, and some of y'all be. Okay, we got, we got, either you're on heroin or you're on grits and either one of them is unacceptable. <laughs> amen. So we, had to, we had to get you out to nod, amen. <laughs> grits are not just as bad as it. Anyway. So, 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 so we, we, we have to have light, light in your environment. You've got to have light in your environment. That is not just, just a uh, luminescent light, but it's also uh, enlightenment, you know, and that's what you want to create as a culture is enlightenment where people around you are, 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 are enlightened because you are giving them enlightenment and you can only do that because you do the, you, you have that. And so our environment must be, and that's why it's so important for you to go to the word of God and let God Reparent you, even if you had the best parents that that ever lived and, and you got to let God reparent you. Amen. Because there are things that God knows about you that your parents would never know about you. There are ways that he's going to instruct you that your parents could never instruct you because they just didn't have that level of enlightenment. And so you got to go to God and let God say, God, I need you to be my daddy and my mom. I need you to be all that I need in terms of revelation. I need you to show me who I am. I need you to, to lead God and direct me where my life is concerned. But first thing I need you to do is just to ensure me uh, that, 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 that I, I know who I am by what you say that I am. We, we make a confession of that uh, every, every uh, time we have a service. Amen. This is my Bible. It's the word of my God. I am what it says. I am. I can do what it says. I can do. I will have everything that my. And we go on with that. But it's about who God is in our lives. And that's why I did that. And we do that because I want people to know that it's about what God says about them. It's not about what the teacher said. It's not about what the, what the community said. It's not about what Pookie and Ray Ray and them said. It's not about what Smiley said. It's not about uh, what any of those other folks said. It's about what God. It's not about what, what, what your parents said about you. It's not about what the police said about you. It's not what your what your record says about you. It's about what God says about you. That's who you are. Those are things that just happen in your life. But who you are is what God says about you. And when you ever get you get a hold of that thing right there, man, you're talking about being a powerful and directed person. Not in terms of being arrogant and 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 and, 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 and beside yourself and sticking your chest out no it, it, you you become a person that is informed and powerful and 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 meet for the master's use and so we have an environment that's full of light and that's enlightenment and the next thing we do is that we've got to begin to to create order we have to have order enlightenment creates order i like order man i'm i'm i'm, I'm a stickler for order I, I like to have things in their place and I want them in their place, you know. So I have a bowl for the keys in the house to the car. I don't want uh, uh, whatnots in it. Y'all you know, know what whatnots in my grandma, my grandma used to talk about whatnot. That's any other thing. I don't want. I, I, I don't, don't. I don't want no no uh, uh, paper clips. You know. I, I don't want no no. Uh, um, uh, stuff that you don't even know what it is, but since you didn't, it looked like it's important, but since you know what it is, you just put it in the key. No, don't put that in there. You get another bowl for that. Amen. This is for car keys only. You know, I'm not going to be running around looking for the keys because everybody knows where they are and where they should be. You know, uh, order is important. And so God begins to operate in, 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 in providing order for us. And he, he separates the light from the dark. He separates the waters that were above the firmament from waters that were below the firmament. He starts making separation. He starts creating order in this environment. And the reason why he's doing it is because he understands that to build effectively, there must be separation. Growth requires separation. And so if you're going to grow, you got to you got to be prepared to separate yourself from some stuff that's going to keep you from growing. And there will be some things that will stifle your growth, that will stifle your growth. And 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 uh, and I would be aware of that. Be aware of that. I was talking to somebody earlier today and I said, you know, you know, one of the things that I want to encourage you is to watch, watch your trajectory. Watch, watch how where you're going and and how, how that look, it's a slippery slope that ends up in something a lot worse than what you're experiencing right now. So where your work ethic is concerned and where, you, where your timeliness is concerned, and where that, uh, watch that. Watch your attitude. Be aware of your attitude and what kind of attitude you're, you're promoting and what kind of attitude you, you have because that's a slippery slope that leads somewhere that you don't want to go. 
Amen. When you have those negative kind of kind of kind of behavior, separate yourself from those things. One of the things I'm really grateful for, for the many years that I was an assistant pastor is I never had those kind of issues. Partly because of what my dad did to me. I had a great work ethic. And so I, I, I worked hard and I, I was the first one there all the time. I wasn't the first one there uh, uh, sometime. Every service, I was the first one there, Sunday or Wednesday. And my family was there, you know, and, and, and uh, my family understood that the, the culture we're creating is that we will be at church. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we will be at church, not on time, but early. And my, one of my little babies told me, uh, uh, Jackson told me, we, we were riding home from church Sunday. He said, he said, he said Papa, are, are, you, are, you running, are you running late? Are you, are you, run, you, run, you, run, you running behind time? Are you a little bit behind time? I said, no. He said, well, what are you? I said, pop-up is always early. I said, I, I want to be on time, but I prefer to be early. He said, oh, so you early. I said, that's exactly what pop-up is. Always early, and you be early too. You know? So, but we got to separate ourselves from those things that will make us be late. <laughs> you know? People or whatever, if you have to help folk in, in the house, hurry up and get ready or, or get ready on time, get them up early. Whatever. You got to separate yourself from stuff that causes you to not be able to perform in ways that God can bless you. The Bible says in Proverbs 5.18, we said last time we met, uh, 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 let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. Now, I got to move forward. We talked about these laws of production. I really want to want to go over these again with you. And so this session is primarily going to be review. And, and we'll pick up and move forward from here. But these are important things, and I want you to get them. The laws of production. And what the law of production says is that everything produces after its own kind. I didn't make that up. It wasn't some revelation God gave me. It's in the Bible. God said it. You produce after your own kind. Amen? Amen? You can't get a baby out of one of these chairs. Huh? I don't care what you do to the table. You'll never get it pregnant. Why? Everything produces after its own kind, you know? And, and so that's a law in, uh, of production. So you're going to produce after your own kind, amen? Everything produces after its, after its, after its own kind. And, um, but the principle is this, in, in this, that God always makes the first move in every area of our lives. When you get there, God's been there. Say it with me, when I get there, God's been there. And so he initiates everything, and you and I respond to what, what God has initiated. The truth is this, we said, God only asks us to do what he's already done for us. He only asks us to do what he's already, already done for us. It's, you know, the, the picture is this. You, you get the baby's food together. You get it fed as a baby. You put the baby in the high chair, and then you, 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 you feed the baby. Amen. You feed the baby. You, you, you're, you're only doing for the baby, or you're making available to the baby what you've already made, made available, what you've already done. The baby don't have to cook no food. The baby don't have to buy no food. The baby don't have to, 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 to stir the food and, and clean the bowl. And you've done all that work so that the baby can have what it needs. Amen? God has done all the work so you and I can have what we need. So we just need to know what God wants us to do and move in the direction that God wants us to move in. And so when we understand the laws of, 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 of production, we understand that there's a difference in trusting God and doing our part. Now, this is a big deal in, in the church because we, we want to drop a lot of stuff on God and lay it on God. But the laws, of, the laws of production says everything produces after its own kind. And you and I are tri-dimensional nature people. We have a spirit, soul, and a, and, and, and a body. And, and, and we produce out of those areas. Now, there's several factors that, that impact it. I'm skipping over some stuff uh, just for, for the inter in the interest of time. Um, um, and and that, that there are several factors that impact uh, uh, what you and I produce, uh, given these three, these three areas we talked about. So there's a physical factor, there's an intellectual factor, and there's a spiritual factor. And so our individual lives are... are, are are kind of a microcosm of the two kinds of problems that we're going to find in life and certainly in the church. And that is this, the spiritual one. And you can never solve a spiritual problem with a leadership answer. Why? Everything does have its own kind. 
So how do I solve a spiritual problem? With a spiritual answer. And you never solve a leadership problem with a spiritual answer. Well, I'm going to pray that they get here on time. I'm just praying, Lord, help them. I'm just going to pray that they show up. No, you don't show up two times and you go work someplace else. That's leadership. That wasn't spiritual. Now, you might, some people might want to make it, well, the Lord is leading me to let you go. <laughs> we spiritualize a whole lot of stuff and, and make it God. You know, I get that. People come in to, well, well they told me, Pastor, you said it. I ain't said nothing. People, well, Pastor said he wanted, because they know if they say Pastor said, that got a little juice on it, right? You know, and I, did you say, I said, no, I didn't say that. Bring them to me. Let them say it in front of me that I said that, you know. Well, he didn't say it, but it, that's what he meant. <laughs> now you're in my head. Your, your hand is in my back. You remember that song, I'm Your Puppet? Yeah. Pull a string and I go at you, I'm your puppet. You remember that? Yeah. Some of y'all ain't know that. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so, so you'll be unable to solve a spiritual problem with a, with a, with a, with a, with a leadership answer. You'll be un, unable to solve a leadership problem with, with, a, with a spiritual answer. Um, so successful productivity in our lives and that's where God was leading to when he was, develop, when he was developing the world and the environment here uh, for us to be able to live in this environment he was, he was going to production because he made design things to produce so he had to have an environment within which they could be produced and, 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 and do that successfully but success where well, you and I are concerned is where the leadership factor and the the, uh, 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 um, the, the God factor are understood where we're able to to dissect those things and see how they work and, and, and what they are and where to apply the, the, the right piece in, in the right area. Amen. He says this faith shows us the, the reality of what we hope for it is the evidence of things we cannot see uh, through, through through their faith. The people uh, in the days of old earned a good reputation by faith. We understand that the that the entire universe was was formed. Uh, at God's command and that what we what we see did not come from anything that can be seen. It's important that you get that you understand that. That production is not just a physical thing, but production is a spiritual thing and a spiritual thing first. Amen. And so he says, by faith, you understand that. Now, what the only thing I can get out of that by faith, I understand that is that I produce in my own life in that same way. Outcome and result, Amen. you know, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm his word is what what produced outcome. Light be and there was what? And he went on and said that something else and something else. And, something, and he looked back at it and said it was good. He produced it by his word. Amen. Amen. And it's by God's word that you and I are going to produce some things in our lives as well. Amen. 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 In numbers, we looked at this last the, the last week. We're looking at numbers. Chapter 13, I want you to read it. But you remember when Moses was leading the children of Israel out and, and, and they were going to the land that God had promised them, going to the promised land. And, and, uh, and one of the things I said, and when I say this, I, 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 I want to be careful because I don't want to get out of line with God. But, but, but I think you can look at what God's put in the word of God because he puts things there for you to learn from. Right. And so there's a possibility in which Moses uh, um, could have been guilty of neglecting some leadership factors. When he sent those spies out, God told him, dude, he did that. But what happened, uh, and when they came back, we, we can't, who are we going to blame? Are you going to blame God? Is that, was that God's fault? If God says, I'm giving you a car, are you expecting God to drive up to your house in the car? Get out, come knock on your door, hang the keys. Of, Here's a car you prayed for him, so happy to be able to bring this to you. Huh? No. God said, I'm going to give it to you, but you have responsibility. What's your responsibility? A number of things. Determine what kind of car you want, what's in your budget, what, what, you, what you can afford, you know, and then, and then get at that, you know. Get at that. Go start going to places and getting prices and 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 God said I'm gonna make it available to you, but you've got a part to do as well, amen. amen. And so he sent the spies out. Uh, Moses did that, he sent the spies out. They were to to, to scope out uh, the land that was that was there, 
But obviously that mission failed. And so we've got to ask ourselves this question. Could, could Moses have assumed that God was going to take care of everything for him? I'm not, I'm not knocking Moses, y'all. I'm looking at the Bible and I'm seeing what, God's, what God makes available in, in the Bible. Don't make Moses God. Moses was not God. Amen. Moses was a man just like me and you. Yeah. Amen. He wasn't God. And so we make these people God, then we, we don't want to critique what they did. You know, you need to look at that and, 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 and be realistic about that. Because he was a man that God spoke to and that God used mildly, but he was a man. And men are subject to error. Look at the person next to you and say, he might be talking about you. I don't know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> he might have been thinking that. He might have been thinking God was going to take care of everything. And so I don't like to say mindset. I like to say mind sight because our mind sees things. Um, uh, and so his mind sight and attitude uh, of, of the spies or the mind sight and attitude of the, of the spies uh, let's us know that that there were some some things that were that were missing there and was it missing because maybe he thought God was going to take care of it where they were concerned. The, the faith of the spies and the readiness of of the spies for for the mission, uh, it, it could appear that the spies could have could have benefited from greater preparation for the mission. It, it's evident to me. You come back with the port you come back with and start whining and complaining and, and, and going on, then you need more training. That job that we talked about that we're going to give to somebody. person gets that job and then they come here complaining about working. Huh? No, what are we going to do? Al's going to train you and we're going to train you and we're going to support you, but, but you can't come back here complaining about coming to work. These people keep asking me to move chairs or what the heck do you think we hired you for? And the reality is you ain't got to move not man another chair. You can get to stepping. Amen. And we can give somebody else your job. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But one of the things we need to do up front is let people know don't take this job if you're going to come to work complaining. And if you have a complaint, that's okay because there'll be some things that maybe you can crit critique and it'll help us do a better job. Amen? Frequent interaction, interdependence among the members, and self-maintenance are the three things that are characteristic of a successful organization. The Rand Corporation did a study, a broad study, years ago, and that stuck with me. They found that those three things are what characterize a successful organization. Frequent interaction, interdependence, and self-maintenance. In other words, they got a way to deal with the problems. And so there may be a problem. We're open to hearing critique about how we can do things better. But if you're just upset because you got to go to work, and you don't like you don't like you don't like the work. Well, go work someplace that you like. That's all you need to do. Amen. And, and, and so they could have benefited from that. Moses was unable to influence the people to move forward. You know, um, 10 of the 12 spies, they, they came back with a bad report and the mission was temporarily aborted. Had to be aborted temporarily. I mean, those people could have went right on into what God promised them. And, and without a problem, but, but the stuff that they didn't separate themselves from caused them to, to temporarily stop what God was doing in their lives and in the lives of, of the community that they were, that they were in. And so what happened? God told them to go. What happened? What happened to them is what happens in our personal and church lives. It was nothing different. The exact same thing. They can, we conflate and they conflate and we conflate the God factor with the leadership factor. That means we bring those things together and we make them one and they're not one. The God factor is one thing. The leadership factor is another thing. Amen. Amen. And, and, and uh, there, there's the, the lines between God's role and, and our role. You, you can't blur them. Because when you blur God's role and your role, you're becoming God. You're becoming God. And that, that's a problem. If you, you're God, well, all of us got a problem. And so our greatest fruit, fruitfulness in, 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 in God's kingdom is going to be when, when the God factor and leadership factor are in harmony and partnership. Harmony and partnership. What am I saying? What that says is that without God, I cannot. 
he said, Jesus said in the word, did he not? Without me, you can't do nothing. Amen? Amen. Nothing that's going to be worth something. And that's what fools us. The devil lets you do something and you think it's worth something. But a lot of stuff that we do ain't worth two dead flies. Amen? That's the God factor. Without God, I cannot. That's what God said. That's, that's the God factor. And then without me, God will not. That's the leadership factor. You, 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 don't, you don't join the church and expect God to come preach every Sunday, do you? God show up with flames and chariots. Come through the ceiling and get in the pulpit and teach you, huh? Come on, y'all. Amen. Amen. No. God ain't getting up fixing your breakfast for you. He blessed you to get the food. And now guess who has to cook it? God, I sure as you would, you know, if I can get a couple extra hours of sleep and I could get that extra hour, if you had cooked it. In Numbers 12 and 13, the God factor in Moses' life, what did they do? You're going to read it. I'm not going to go through and read it because I don't have time. But the God factor establishes Moses' authority. And I tell people, now listen, I'm not just talking about Moses or pastors or, or preachers. Listen, wherever you are, if you're in a position that God gave you, then God establishes your authority. How you handle that position, that's a leadership piece, determines whether or not you stay in that position. Amen? Or whether or not there, 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 there are adjustments that, that, that need, need to be made. So God establishes Moses', Moses authority, and God defended Moses against murmuring. That's why we ain't got to fight folk if we're in the position God has given. I tell people all the time, when God puts you in the position, stand in the authority that God's given you. Amen? Amen. I ain't talking about picking up rocks and getting sticks. I'm talking about just resting in God and knowing that God got you there. Amen. Amen. And even if somebody comes against you and moves you, God has a place you need to move to. Amen. And it could be that God getting you out of a raggedy thing to put you in a better thing. But sometimes God will put you in a situation that you got to go through some stuff and because he's developing you and, 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 and toughening you up and getting you, getting you prepared to be able to manage something. Listen to me, because the next thing that you're going to do is going to be more involved in this. And if you can't pass this, if you can't make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, why would we think you can cook a steak? Huh? You, 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 I mean, if you can't do the basic, if you can't, if you can't put some peanut butter on a cracker, I don't want your steak. No, I don't know about that. I never made a peanut butter. Don't, don't talk to me about steaks. Huh? God defended Moses against murmuring. And you, you read it in the story there in, in, in 12, the anger of the Lord, the Bible says, uh, 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 was, was aroused, uh, uh, aroused them and, and he departed and, and, and a cloud departed from them. And, and, and some people became lepers as white as snow because they were talking against God's man. One of the things that you need to understand is that you might not like the personality or the person that, that, that is in authority at a church or an organization. And it don't have to be just a church, it could be somebody in a secular situation. You be careful how you operate against people. Amen. All authority, the Bible says, is from God. And so you don't have to agree with that, but you don't you don't want to come against it. And you don't want to be talking negatively and and, and, and particularly in, in, in church situations. It takes God a long time to develop a church, to grow the pastor. And, develop, and, and then what he doesn't want is somebody coming in, tearing down what he spent years to develop. And you put yourself in trouble. So God, God also uh, executed justice on those who oppose Moses. I had a situation at one time years ago and, 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 and it would involve some folk and I asked God, God, what should I do? What should I do about that? He said, you need to pray for them. Amen. And I went to a, a, a counselor, this guy, uh, Dad Mason, who, who, who stopped a ministry that, that, was, that was a huge ministry. At the time he stopped, God told him to stop. I want you to counsel pastors. I want you to counsel pastors. He had some, you know, five, 10,000 members and, 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 and God said, stop right here. Get off of this. I thank God that that man obeyed God. I don't know if I'd have been able to do that. Stop and counsel pa pastors. And when I went to his funeral, funeral um, a couple of years ago, this auditorium had probably 4,000 people in the auditorium. Mostly men 
who dad had counseled. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> 4,000, we were, we were brothers in that we had the same father and, and dad who, 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 Mason, who, who counseled us. But God executed justice on behalf of, of Moses. You see that in 12, 14 uh, through, through 15 uh, on people uh, uh, that directly opposed him. And then on the whole uh, body of people, 20 and older, who, 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 who were against what the spies uh, uh, or, or what the two spies that came back, uh, Joshua and Caleb, who came back and told them this land is good, we can take it. And they were against him and they wanted to stone Moses and stone Joshua and Caleb. And God said, none of y'all coming in. 20 and under get to come in, but, uh, but 19 and under get to come, but 20 and older? All y'all gonna die in the wilderness. You'll never come into the place. Listen, you don't want to put yourself in the position where you can't come into what God has for you. And it's all because of your mouth. Putting your mouth on the wrong people. You got to watch yourself. Be careful because God ain't playing about his business. Amen. And God told me that. And when I went to dad and asked dad, I said, dad, what should I do about it? I really wanted to get him. That's what I, you, you know, you know, how, come on. I'm, I'm just like y'all. Don't act like I'm, I'm not. Amen. I wanted to get at him. I wanted, I wanted to do something to him. Not physically, but. If it came to that, you know. <laughs> no, I, 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 want, I wanted to take out my uh, 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 action on them. I wanted to punish them in some kind. And, and, and I asked, what do you, he said, son, you need to pray for them. He said the same thing the Spirit of God told me. You need to pray for them because they don't understand. They're not fighting against you. They're fighting against God. And the devil has deceived them and they're blinded. And they don't know that it's not you, it's God that they're fighting against. And God's going to only allow it for so, so long. And after that, God's going to exact some, some out of their behind. Amen. God gave clear direction to Moses uh, uh, and the people to, 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 to take the land. He gave them clear directions. So God said, I'm giving you the land. And so why would you say we're unable to get it? I say, say we can't take this land. Ten of the spies said that. There's giants in the land. And, 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 and we look like grasshoppers uh, 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 to them. Now that, was, that was your assessment of yourself. One of the worst things, fellas, that you can do is to take inventory on you. God saw you when he sent you when you first drove up. He knew you was a, a grasshopper. But he wants to make you a lion. You got to determine what you're going to agree with. You or God, lion or grasshopper. Amen. What you going to be? Ask him, I tell you, what you going to be? What are you going to be? What are you asking? What are you going to be? Lion or grass up. You got to make the decision. I want to be what God wants me to be. Amen. I want to be what God wants me to be. So never swap roles with God. You stay in your land. Your land. God said, I'm giving you the land. So what do I do? I don't care what it looks like. There could be giant monkeys out there. Eating all the bananas in the land. If God says it's mine, guess what? I'm going to get the giant monkeys and the bananas. I'm getting everything that God has for me. I'm going to get, and that's what my mindset has to remain. I'm getting what God has for me. Amen? Because God's authority is the ultimate authority. And, and God will fight for you. So you need to, you guys got computers. Google, God will fight for me. God will fight. Google that and look at the scripture you get. And then put those scriptures up and, and, and drop your rocks and start picking up the word and looking at how God will fight for you. You know, and then listen to me. If God's going to fight for you, guess what? You don't have to fight for yourself. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. That'll keep us from fighting with our wives, from wives from fighting with their husbands. Why? God will fight. Amen. Yes. Well, but I'm trying to get her to do something. What, what do I do? You just go get on your knees. You, you know what? You, you, you go to the cross. <laughs> Jesus ain't the only one that got to get on the cross. You got to cross the bear also. And so in the areas where you, you have issues, I struggle with this just like you do. But I have to go to God. I, I told you about that time I was, I was, I was, Sister T would put the, these letters, she'd get the letter out of the mailbox and put them on the dining room table and they were stacking up. You know, I'm, you know I, I, I like everything in a place. Process it when you get it out. That's the way I think. When you get it out, look at it, process it, and, and, and move forward. You know? But don't leave it on the table. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, honey, why don't you do this? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to look through. I'm going to look through. Uh, every day, I'm going to look through. I'm going to look through. And I called my father and I, and I said, dad, look, you know, she can't do it. You know, man, she, I'm just complaining. And, 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 and he got quiet. I said, you there? He said, yeah, I'm here. I said, what do you think? He said, why don't you move it? 
Do you know that that thought never occurred to me? <laughs> I, I never thought, get the letters, your tired self. You so tired, get the mail and put the system together and, and, and help her to do that, you know? And so I did that, I did that, and, 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 and guess what? I didn't even really put scissors, I just got that mail and processed that, and she just started doing the mail different from then on, you know? But she needed that, that, uh, that assistance. And, and, and so there, there may be ways that you can assist your wives in, in, in moving forward on what you want them to move forward on. Uh, if you'll listen to God, let God talk to you, amen? God will fight for you and stop, and, 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 but, you, but he ain't gonna fight for you until you stop defending yourself. Amen? You got a little baby, the baby just crying, is upset, maybe it's got colic and it's just crying and move around. You can't really help the baby until the baby calms down. And so what do we do? We try to calm the baby down first. Amen. And once the baby has calmed down, maybe we can then give him a bottle or give her a bottle or give her something that's going to help. You can't even give him medicine until they're quiet. Amen. Arnell here, great, one of the greatest dentists in Southern California. Arnell Jr., raise your hand. Jesus, that's Arnell. So you need a dentist. Arnell is available. You got to pay now. This ain't no free dentistry because he's in the ministry. This ain't ministry. This ain't, this ain't we ain't in Haiti, Africa, or the Philippines, or some of the other countries we go to with dentists and doctors. And we're that, we're not, but, 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 um, yeah, yeah, it'll be, you go to Haiti and get it free. But, but listen, but, 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 uh, can you imagine a dentist removing a teeth from somebody just, just fighting them in the, in the chair? No, no. He's going to say, well, listen, you, 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 we will let you out and you come back when you're ready to get your tooth removed, amen? And, and you say, well, when are they going to be ready? When, they, when, they, when it gets painful enough. Sometimes we won't move until a thing gets painful enough. You know? It gets painful enough. Like that hound that was sitting on the porch, and it was just howling, ooh, it was like a howl, like a pain howl. And so the little boy asked the grand, granddaddy, why, why, why is old Joe howling like that? Because he, because he, she said, because he's sitting on a nail. And he said, well, why, why don't he get up and move? He said, because it ain't got painful enough yet. When it gets painful enough, he'll get up and move and stop howling, amen? And, and, and don't wait for it to get that painful for you. Amen? Don't wait for that, amen? God takes care of, of any opposition that's going to come get against you. Now, let me, let me move on and, and deal with more of this leadership factor issue. God plays a role and you play a role also. You got to recognize the importance of the leadership factor and also uh, on, on, on your fruitfulness, your faithfulness, your time, your timing and your mission, the leadership role. God never guaranteed Moses that the spies would see the land from his perspective. That was up to the leader. He never guaranteed that. You won't find in the Bible God guaranteed Moses that everybody you sin is going to see it the same way. So what did, what did Moses, well, let's, let's move on. Two, God never guaranteed uh, Moses the spies would remain unified in their report. That was up to Moses. That's a leadership issue. Reporting back. That was a leadership issue that had to be taken care of. God never guaranteed Moses the spy would, spies would be ready to fight for the land that was, uh, uh, that was up, up to the leader again. He never guaranteed Moses that they'd be ready to fight. I know some things God gives you, you might, have, you might have to fight for some of that. You might have to stand. Amen. You might have to resist the devil in some way. God never guaranteed Moses that the spies would communicate the right message. That, that, was, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was not guaranteed. Can, can you begin to see how the error might have been there? You just let people come back and just start talking to the greater community, saying all kind of crazy stuff now. You know? That was up to the leader. And then God never guaranteed uh, uh, the spies would keep a positive attitude about themselves. He never guaranteed that. God don't guarantee that folk in the church are going to stay positive. They're going to just love you, Pastor. And they, they, they got your pack. In the same way them people had Caesar's back with them knives behind them. Huh? Friends, Romans, the countrymen, lend me your ears, for I've come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do 
lives with them. The good is often buried with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. You, you hear what I'm saying? The, the, Caesar, the, 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 he, 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 was, he was off his, his game. He should have some people that check the people. You come here with a knife, you're going to get what? Shank yourself. God never guaranteed Moses that the spies wouldn't persuade the people to quit. Just lay down on him. And seven, God never guaranteed Moses that the spies would, the spies would remember his divine power. Just because you're a believer and you know about the power of God doesn't mean you're going to remember it, particularly in times of, of difficulty and challenge. Huh? He never guaranteed that. Now, I'm, I'm going to stop right here. And I want you to, to, uh, to uh, stay, right, stay right there. And uh, your homework is I want you to read uh, Numbers 4, 14, 1 through 45. I want you to read that. And, and I want you to I want you to look at what might be the God factor and what might be the leadership factor in, in, in that text. All right. And when we come back. We're going to go on talking about this a little bit further. Amen. Um, and we talked about the leadership factor. I'm going to talk to you about the God factor as well when we meet in our next meeting. Amen.